Hey guys, welcome, I'm Brandon, and I have been helping people get into game development for almost two years now. So if you are looking to start your game dev journey, then you have come to the right place. So this is an overwhelming journey to get started. So with that in mind, this video is going to serve as a complete roadmap for starting your game development journey. And we wanna do it in a way that makes sense and we wanna skip any potential time wasters that might come up. So where do we begin? There are a lot of different opinions on even just where you should start and everyone learns a little bit differently. But if you are a hands-on learner, what I would recommend is that you just dive right in and start learning your engine straight away. So naturally then our starting point is going to be, we have to pick an engine. And the landscape for this topic has changed a lot in 2023. So I wanna give you the most accurate and up-to-date information that I possibly can to help you make the best choice for you. Because ideally you can switch engines. No one's saying you can't switch engines, but it's ideal that you don't switch engines. You wanna master one tool. And there are dozens and dozens of game engines out there, but I'm gonna focus on the big three, Unity, Godot, and Unreal. And whenever we talk about these three engines, the topic of graphics almost always comes up. So let's just get that out of the way. If you are a solo developer or you're working on a small team, you really don't need to worry about graphical capabilities. All three of those engines I just mentioned will suit your needs just fine. If you're working solo, you're probably not going to be pushing the boundaries of any of those engines. So I wouldn't worry about that. You can make your game look phenomenal in any of those engines. But there are a few factors that you might want to consider. And normally when it comes to game development, I wouldn't talk about the pricing of the actual engine, but this has been a really hot topic since 2023. So let's deal with that really quickly so that you have all the best information. And we'll start with the paid engines, Unity and Unreal. Now, neither of them cost any money unless you're making a pretty substantial amount of money from your game already. Most indie developers will have to pay very little, if anything at all. And both Unity and Unreal are free to download and there are no core engine features locked behind a paywall. Now, Unity made the headlines in 2023, and that's a big understatement. They announced updates to their pricing and they did not handle it very well whatsoever, but they have since walked it back to something very reasonable. But ever since then, I've noticed there has been a lot of misinformation floating around in terms of what they landed on. So I just wanna make sure that you are getting the accurate information that you need. So the next major Unity update is going to be Unity 6. That is when the new pricing will take effect if you update to that version of Unity. So with that new version, Version, here's how the pricing is going to work. If you make more than $200,000 annually with your game, you'll need to upgrade to Unity Pro, which costs about $185 a month. At that point, you will also owe the lesser of 2.5% of your gross revenue or a download fee per install. And again, that's the lesser of. So the very most you're going to be paying is 2.5% revenue on top of your Unity Pro subscription. Again, this is for Unity version six, which is not out yet. The current pricing for all Unity versions right now, which you can stick with, by the way, if you don't update, is free up to when your game makes $100,000 annually. If your game revenue exceeds $100,000 annually, then you will need to upgrade to Unity Pro. Okay, so that's Unity's pricing. So let's talk about Unreal. Unreal charges 5% if you have earned a lifetime revenue of a million dollars, or apparently a lifetime of 5 million if it's on the Oculus store. So Unreal is a lot more simple. Godot, on the other hand, is open source and therefore is completely free. And I don't want to be mistaken here. I'm not necessarily advocating for anything, but just because Godot is free, I'm not necessarily saying that that is the best choice for you. Godot is free, which is a really, really big advantage. But if you go with Unreal or if you go with Unity, they have really big advantages as well. They have asset stores. They have far more resources. They're not open source, so they are more stable. They have baked in multiplayer services that you can utilize. They will often introduce the cutting edge new technology. Technology. If you want cutting edge new technology, that's the way to go. And in a lot of cases, both of those engines are more performant than Godot is under the hood. And on top of that, if you were looking to get a job in the industry at any point, then learning those two engines would be greatly to your benefit. But with all that being said, Godot is a really, really solid engine. And unless you're wanting to pursue really high end rendering, then Godot is a very popular and very good choice. I personally still use the Unity engine and I don't have any plans on changing. And if my game makes over $200,000 in a year, then I will happily share 2.5% revenue, but that's just me. So that's pricing. Now, the other thing that you need to consider with these engines is which programming options do they make available to you? because each one has a different path that you're going to have to follow. So with Unreal, you will mostly be using Blueprints. Blueprints is a visual, node-based scripting solution. You can write native C++, but most of the resources that you find online are going to be centered around creating 
Blueprints. So if you're new and you're just opening Unreal, then Blueprints is going to be the easiest thing to learn. With Unity, you have the option of writing C Sharp code or their visual scripting solution, which is now just called Unity Visual Scripting. Their visual scripting is going to be very, very similar to Unreal's Blueprints, but in this scenario, it's a little bit flipped because most of the resources that you'll find online when you're searching for solutions to problems will be written in C Sharp, not using Unity's visual scripting. So again, if you're new and you're just starting out and you choose to use Unity, then you'll have the easiest time getting started if you choose regular C Sharp scripting. With Godot, based on my research, it looks like they no longer support visual scripting as of Godot 4. So you'll be writing their own language called GDevelop, which is the one that they recommend. Although it looks like it also supports C Sharp and C++. But again, if you're looking at tutorials online and you're trying to learn it, then you're most likely going to run across GDevelop solutions. Personally, if you are brand new and you're looking to just start out, then I would try all three of them. Spend one or two days in each of them and see which one you like the best personally. They all have slightly different feels, so you might find that one of them feels just a little bit more intuitive for you. All right, now let's say you've gone ahead, you've picked your engine, now you're back here, what is next? You need assets to make your games, right? You need sprites if you're working in 2D or you need models if you're working in 3D. For now, at the beginning stages, what I would recommend is using other people's art. Drawing and modeling are two completely different skill sets outside the scope of what you need to learn with your game engine and now programming as well. If you don't know how to draw or you don't know how to make 3D models, you could learn those things in parallel with learning your engine and programming. But for the sake of getting up and running really quickly, just use art from online right now. You have enough to learn in the early stages. Open game art is a great resource. I'll put a link for that down below. But when you are actually ready for art, if you're working in 2D, then Photoshop is generally your top choice. But if you're on a budget, Krita is free and open source and is also really great. If you're doing 3D, just download Blender. Use Blender. It is free. All the other choices are very expensive. Okay. But again, for now, if you are in the early stages of just getting started, you're going to get up and running much more quickly if you just use other people's art assets. Just for learning, not for making your actual game. Don't steal people's stuff. So, okay, you have your engine. What do you do now? To learn your engine, and the basics of programming. What I would start with is watching two or three beginner friendly tutorials. Follow them, listen to the instructions that they give you. This is just to get your feet wet and to get comfortable and familiar with your engine. Once you've done that, and that is a really, really boring way to learn, but it is going to get your feet wet. But once you're done that, I want you to think of a really, really simple game like Flappy Bird or Pong or a simplified crossy road, something like that, okay? And you're going to try to make it. It's preferable that you choose a game that already exists and you can find some art online for it somewhere. What the game is doesn't matter so much as how you're looking at it. The idea here is that you're able to break down the things that you need to make into really small Googleable chunks. I don't know if that's a word, but I'll say it again. Googleable chunks. Some tiny, simple little game like Flappy Bird can be broken down into really tiny micro steps. How do I get the bird on the screen? How do I get the pipes spawning in? How do I make him fly every time I click the mouse, etc., etc. Since this is a game that already exists, this is gonna simplify things for you because it takes the design out of the equation. It saves you time because you don't have to think up the game rules. You just copy them. Now this exercise, you're gonna to wanna to do this several times. And if you wanna push yourself even a little bit more so that you learn more quickly, what I would do is add a little twist to the end of each of these micro projects. Doing this is going to help you develop your skills so quickly, but it will also help you stay out of what we call tutorial hell. That is where you are stuck in the learning stages forever and ever, and you never feel like you have enough confidence to actually go out and start something on your own. Okay, so if you have made several micro projects, what do you do next? You're going to wanna start participating in game jams. Find them and participate in them, solo or with a team, it really doesn't matter. Just search them in Google, there are billions of them going on all the time. One of the biggest and most popular is Ludum Dare. These will force you to create something fast, under a deadline, and most importantly, you're gonna get critical feedback on your game. If you have done a few micro projects and you have participated in a couple of game jams, what I would recommend you do next is trying to make a game in one month. The first game jam actually that I ever participated in was a month long, and it was a very, very 
very different experience than something like Ludum Dare, which is either 48 or 72 hours, depending on which one you do. Because in a month, you suddenly have time to make a lot of different levels. You can add polish and particles and do some of these things that you might not necessarily have time for in your typical game jam. Things like particles, shaders, music, sound design, level design, animation, 3D modeling. These are all skills you're going to need to acquire, but they are not what you start out with. You can learn all of those skills after you have gained some competency and some confidence in your game engine and with your programming language. So here is a bonus piece of advice for you, okay? When you are playing video games, I would say start playing them with a much more critical eye. Still enjoy them, but actually pay attention to what they are doing. Pay attention to what they did well and what worked, or moments that frustrated you and why did they frustrate you? How would you go about solving that? You can learn a lot about game design just by playing with a critical eye. Like the video if you liked, and if you want a tutorial to help you get started with your very first game project, I have one right here. Bye.